In this lesson, we will learn about wireless LAN topologies and concepts. Let's first learn about the definition for BSF and BSA. When two or more wireless devices must advertise their wireless capabilities, then be granted permission to join to a wireless network provided by an access point. The 802.11 standard calls this a basic services or BSS. As you can see, BSS involves a single access point with no explicit connection into a regular Ethernet network and the wireless service area provided by the access point in a BSS is called Basic Service Area or BSA. So in this network diagram, when laptop A and laptop B must advertise their wireless capabilities to join to the wireless network provided by this access point. So they form a basic service set and the wireless service area provided by the access point is a basic service area. Let's now learn about BSSID and SSID. To inform the existence of a BSS to mobile devices, an AP must advertise its BSS identifier or BSS ID, which is the radio MAC address of the access point. To inform the existence of a BSS to a person, the AP also advertises its wireless network with a service set identifier or SSID, which is a logical name of the wireless network in the form of a text string. So in this network, the SSID is IT life skills and the BSSID is this MAC address. For example, to join laptop B to this wireless network, first, a person must log into laptop B and connect it to the wireless network using the SSID IT Live Skills. After being connected to the wireless network IT Live Skills, laptop B figures that it needs to send a joining request to the access point via the BSSID, which is this MAC address. If the AP grants the access, the laptop will join to the wireless network. As you know, an access point has both wireless and wide capabilities. Therefore, the AP can also uplink into an ethernet network to allow mobile devices to communicate with cable devices. The 802.11 standard refers to the upstream wire Ethernet as a distribution system for the wireless BSS. As you can see, with distribution system, AP acts as a translational bridge for two dissimilar media where wireless 802.11 frames and Ethernet 802.3 frames are translated and then bridged at layer 2. In a multiple VLAN network, each SSID can be configured to map to a VLAN. The IP then appears as multiple logical IPs, one per BSS, with a unique BSS ID for each. So in this wireless network, we can configure this access point with multiple SSIDs. The first one is IT Large Skills 10 and it maps to VLAN 10 and it has this BSSID. The second one is IT Large Skills 20 and it maps to VLAN 20 and it has 
this BSS ID. Even though an AP can advertise and support multiple logical wireless networks, each of the SSIDs covers the same basic service area. The reason is that each SSID maps to the same AP that uses the same transmitter, receiver, antenna, and channel for every SSID that is supposed to extend a service area. More APs are required and installed in such a way that the BSAs are not too much overlapped each other. These APs are interconnected via a switch infrastructure and configured with the same SSID. The 802.11 standard calls this setup an extended service set. In this network, both IP1 and IP2 are configured with the same SSID, IT life skills, and map to VLAN 20. However, IP1 has this BSSID and IP2 has this BSSID. The two IPs are interconnected via this layer 3 switch using the chunk links. Both laptop A and laptop B are configured to join to the wireless network IT life skills. However, depending on their locations, in this case, laptop A will send its joining request to IP1 via this BSSID. However, laptop B will send its joining request to IP2 via this BSSID.